Coming up on Regarding Men, Equality and Other Feminist Frauds. friends welcome to regarding men where we hold men in high regard and where red pill isolation comes to die a fiery death <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm waiting for the flames to where the fire fiery go death. a fiery death i gave it up for lent <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> well <laughs> i'm <Jess> sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay that's all right uh, I'm here joined by my two good friends in the men's issues movement, and they are Paul Elam of paulelam.com and Mr. Golden of Men Are Good. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Very good. Okay, good. well, we've got, uh, we've got some good substance today. Um, we're talking about uh, really preferential hiring and promotion of women and special accommodations for women in various traditionally male-dominated uh, spheres of activity in our societies. And, of course, we know that feminist advocates tell us that feminism is all about gender equality and other types of equality as well. And that's except when it's not about discrimination against men, male shaming, uh, anti-male bigotry, double standards, and breathtaking hypocrisy. So <laughs> that's what we're looking at today. We're going to be looking at three articles that give us, well, the first two give us some hard numbers about what so-called gender equality, or perhaps I should say equity, looks like first in the Queensland Police Service and then in the US military. And then we're gonna look at a feminist article in Jezebel about whether women should be required to serve in the case of a military draft. And that article reveals the deep dishonesty of the feminist movement. So Amen. let's move to the first article, which is about a corruption probe into the Queensland Police Service. I think it took place during the years 2015 to 2018, where no surprise to anybody who's been paying attention to these kinds of things, the probe found that in an effort to raise the proportion of women in the Queensland Police Service, from 26% as it was when the directive first came down to 50% as the target. In that effort, at least 200 highly qualified male applicants, and I'll bet it was more than that, but the probe found at least 200 highly qualified male applicants were passed over in favor of women, many of whom, or at least a number of whom, didn't even meet the minimal requirement for entry into the Queensland Police Academy, and hundreds of whom, lesser qualified than the men, were promoted through the ranks and are now, I assume, working for the Queensland Police Service. This went on for years as a result of this directive to get more women into the Queensland Police Service, and the people who got in trouble for it, uh, three people have been fired as a result of this probe. The people who got in trouble, I think actually it was a rather unfair situation. They were merely following the directives of those higher up who wanted to improve the image of the police service and boast about how they were promoting women. And so these people did that very enthusiastically and then that meant lowering standards and lying to others about the qualifications of the women that they were admitting. Uh, and this is the result of it. And we have an article that is very keen to assure us that there's nothing to say against the goal of gender equity. It's just how it happened to be implemented in this particular case. Although one does have to ask, 
how can it be implemented when you're dealing with spheres of activity that men generally have been more interested in, in and certainly overwhelmingly better qualified for and better able to do how else can you increase the percentage of women than by lowering standards and taking lesser qualified women and excluding highly qualified men crazy 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 and the thing that got me janice was that they talked about not just the physical standards yes. the psychological standards you know both of which apparently i mean they didn't go into detail about it but i'm just thinking ooh, that's not good you know and yes. you're right though these people you know they were told well we need to get to 50 50 and they didn't tell them how and uh i don't know what are they supposed to do of course then again these people when they were questioned by different groups in the media they wouldn't give answers they were evasive they wouldn't tell them exactly what they were doing so you know that sort of says that they knew what they were doing they knew what they were doing was wrong and they did it anyway mm. well they were following the clear directions oh sorry go ahead paul no i was just going to say that that that's the problem when the goals are political instead of having a goal that is meant to enhance the effectiveness of the police service to improve the quality uh, of what the police are able to provide they simply put a criteria on their political objectives of we need so many people with vaginas <laughs> and we can't That's really it. we can't think about qualifications we can't think about actually being able to do the job and this is why i agree with you janice that this i i do have some sympathy for the people that were fired because they were given a political objective which they could not accomplish if they applied any kind of equal standards to the job. Right. And so they obviously, they bypassed the standards and, and went just for filling the positions with women. And it turned out bad, uh, good, good qualified policemen uh, didn't get to the job because of that. And so now the politicians that were behind all this say, well, we need a scapegoat. Uh, so let's fire the people who did our bidding. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nothing new yeah. in the world of politics, folks. Mm, yeah. <coughs> Same thing, only different. Sorry, I think I got so irate thinking about that. that <laughs> I got a tickle in my throat. <coughs> it's, um, uh, it's a shocking story. It would be shocking. Sorry, I'm going to have to. I don't have any tea. Okay, uh, it, it would be shocking if this were a one-off as well. I, I find it shocking to think that at least 200 highly qualified men were passed over <clears throat> yeah. in favor for women who didn't, in many cases, meet and certainly didn't exceed and, the qualifications. And you know <laughs> what? A, there wasn't a thing in the article about the men and how they got yeah. screwed. That's it. <laughs> These 200 men, 200 plus men, got terribly screwed. Not one word in that article about it. In fact, it does the opposite. You know, it says the opposite. It frames the women who came in, who weren't qualified, who came in as being the victims. Here's a, here's a little piece from it. It says, listen to this. They, these women who got in unscrupulously in some respects in many respects in fact are the innocent victims of the way this policy was sought to be implemented he said what yeah no you can't what? you can't you can't say anything against the women if you imply <laughs> if you imply that these women benefited from the lowering of standards oh, being put in positions where they will be a, a drag on their units they will be a drag on their partners. They will carry out their tasks in inadequate ways. To imply that they got something that they didn't deserve and that that's a serious issue for the police service and for the men who are unjustly excluded. Oh, no, we can't have that. We have to say that the women are victims. I mean, it's, it's truly incredible. It really is incredible. Well, well, there is something to this I just wanted to throw in. Uh oh. Uh, and, and, and I'm very serious about it. When you hire somebody into a dangerous position that it yes. cannot do the job, you are putting them in danger. It's uh, they. Yes. Is right. 
they do endanger their partners. They endanger the efficacy they endanger of the, the public. Operation. Exactly. They endanger the public, but they're also in danger too. Uh, I just yes. saw a film uh, on the news yesterday of a female police officer in New York getting the crap beat out of her by a homeless guy, a woman that was working with her on, and there had to be citizens that intervened in that, or she might have been killed or beaten half to death. Huh. Uh, but there is, I think, some truth to that. When you put people into a dangerous position that they cannot physically handle, which has already been established in, in their inability to pass tests and to meet physical standards, sure. then you do, I, I think there is, I don't think that was the way the article meant no. <laughs> by, by saying that women were the victims, but it makes a victim out of everybody. Yes. No, exactly. It, I absolutely agree. This is an outrage. I mean, it, it is mind boggling to think of the willingness of so many people in positions of power to lower the quality of those who work for the police service. Uh, you know, I used to think that gender equity would be carried out mostly in those spheres of our society that we could afford to lose, essentially, you know, that it would be in offices, it would be in teaching. It would be in HR departments. It would be, you know, wherever it could be possible that the quality would be lowered and people would notice, but the planes wouldn't fall from the sky and the bridges wouldn't collapse and the army wouldn't become entirely feminized. Uh, and yet it turns out that actually the people in power in our societies are willing to have everything ruined. And anybody who thinks, anybody who's being paying attention will know that this isn't a, a singular situation. It right. isn't just the Queensland police service. They this got is caught. going on. Yeah, they got caught because they must have done it in an extremely blatant, yes. like it must have been egregiously clear that these women were not qualified. But this is going on, have no doubt, everywhere, at least in the English speaking world. Don't, I can't really speak outside of that. And it has been going on since at least the 1980s. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a terrible thing in all sorts of ways. And we're paying a price. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Pain let's let's move on to the next article because it's even worse, I think. <laughs> next article. Oh, nearly half of female soldiers still failing new army fitness test while males pass easily. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. And, so and they, you know, they, I think they sorry. made this new test to be easier, didn't they? <laughs> the new test is supposed to be easier on people. Well, they claim that the new testing yeah. was supposed to promote gender equity. <laughs> yeah, that's another way to say it's easier. Non-gendered test, which is to say that whatever elements of this testing are non-gendered ended up being harder for women. That's why they're failing at incredible rates. Uh, so, yeah, it may have actually been an attempt. Uh, I can't imagine what geniuses in the Pentagon came up with this stuff that would so obviously backfire on them. The moment you started evaluating who was passing and who was failing, you were going to come up with numbers just like this. And if they didn't know that in advance, I, I hate to think of these guys being in charge of the defense of our country. They scare me more than female combat soldiers. Uh, yeah. These guys that are in charge of these idiotic standards. And, and here we go. Yes, nearly half of them are failing. And um, I think the numbers bear out that they're failing miserably. They're not just not passing. They're not even coming close. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, and of course, the article, like the one that we just looked at, is very quick to play the, you know, we have to worry about the women in this situation. The yeah. opening yes. paragraph, I think. Oh, yeah, there it is. So, more than seven months after the official launch of the Army Combat Fitness Test, or ACFT, nearly half of female soldiers are still falling short with enlisted women struggling the most. I think their failure rate was well over 50%. The data, here's the second sentence. I mean, this is, 
This is a bombshell report yeah. about the reduction of efficiency, lethality, efficacy of the U.S. military. And the second sentence of the report says the data again raises questions about whether the Army's attempt to create a fitter force is creating more barriers to success for women. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the point we need the debate, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the and the article goes on to say that it goes on it almost it seems to assure concerned readers that this is not going to have any impact right now on any woman's career aspirations. Uh, that the results of the tests will not be taken into account for promotions or anything like that. They won't even really be uh um, I forget what the word was, but but they won't be even taken seriously until 2022. Right. And it also makes clear that uh, army officials are already talking about creating gender specific standards. So in other words, they're going to lower the standards so that women don't have to face the fact that they can't do what you're supposed to be able to do to be in the military. I mean, it, it uh, well, it, it's it's striking uh you know the, the idea that the u.s military primarily owes something to women who might want to have careers in it rather than to be the best fighting force it can be when did that idea become so widely accepted obviously it is now the standard line in the military and uh it's pretty staggering cue the woke military advertisement you know yes <laughs> like that's yeah. exactly what's happening it's crazy yeah and absolutely yeah. in china and russia both countries are promoting hardcore masculinity yep. in their military yeah. services hmm. Gee, why do you think they're doing that guys why um yeah and part of this too <laughs> that, that really just i don't think this has been thought through very well Right now, our last two or three combat theaters have been in mi Middle Eastern countries where it's a, a lot of flatland. I mean, there's mountains in Afghanistan, of course, and, the, and female soldiers didn't go into the mountains of Afghanistan to fight. They only sent the men. Men are still at 97 percent of the combat risk. But imagine a theater like Southeast Asia, where we had to hack our way through jungles and imagine putting women in those positions with men. It would never happen. Men are still 97 plus percent of the mortality risk in combat. Therefore, in my opinion, they should get 97 percent of the combat pay. But that's a different yeah. subject. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the nonsense of the pretense that women can do these things, even though there is the evidence, do you want to put it up, Tom, for all to see of the failure rates? And yeah. even with even with the, I mean, so there it is, the failure rates for men, very, very low. You know, the, the worst they do is the two mile run, there's a 5% failure rate. Uh, then you look at it for the women, you've uh -oh. got 22% who can't do the leg tucks and 22% who can't do the two mile run and higher rates of failure in every other task. Uh, you know, the and, and of course, it needs to be said, I think, that passing a test is really the bare minimum that, that could be hoped for and does not in any way indicate that women are actually fit to serve alongside men, as you were just indicating, Paul. You know, when you actually encounter the various kinds of terrain that you know, might have to be dealt with. Yep. Uh, the, this is not, of course, taking into account all of the emotional and psychological burdens that are faced during a combat situation. And I mean, we already know this anyway. The Marine Corps did a huge study in 2015 that I think proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that all male fighting units are simply better they are faster they are more lethal they're more efficient with the equipment and they're able to evacuate casualties far more effectively than the mixed gender units so why would you even consider having mixed gender units uh i mean it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that women are simply 
you know, women's ligaments are weaker. Women's cardiovascular systems are not as strong. The hand grip of women is far weaker than that of men. Men are, uh, you know, have much, a 50% higher, I think, bone mass, um, 30 to 40% more muscle mass. Like, you know, every single criterion that, that, that you could measure shows that men are better equipped for, for combat. So why are we pretending otherwise and, and worrying about how women's career aspirations might be impacted by a fitness test? And even if we go on, Tom, could you show the other chart that showed even like the, the, the passing uh, numbers that women achieved? So even if they pass the test, like they're nowhere near what, what, you know, the, the men can achieve. Yeah. If you yeah. look and at all even, of those We're scores. not even talking about so many of the intangibles that come with combat. You've got a, if you've got a wounded comrade uh, in a battle, you are going to have to throw 200 pounds, 200 plus pounds across your shoulders and carry somebody. I'm sorry, women as a rule. I mean, I'm sure that we can find women somewhere that can do that. Uh, Nobody's disputing that. But generally speaking, how many women out of 100 can throw a fully grown wounded man across their back, keep their rifle, keep their backpack, keep uh, their everything about them, and then walk three miles with that, as happens in many cases? Um, this is just not doable. And the people at the Pentagon know this. We've had leftist politicians filtering into the Pentagon produced by our universities and filtering into the Pentagon for a long time now. And this is what we're seeing. We're yep. seeing woke generals, the most incredibly stupid idea that I've heard uh, maybe in my life. It's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it, it really is. Uh... Uh, it's 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 startling and and it certainly raises questions about the um, discussion over the uh, selective service system. Yes. Um, you know, and right now I guess the Supreme Court is about to rule, and this this oh, oh just before we go to this next article, which is this feminist article about the draft and whether women should be uh, you know required <laughs> to register in the selective service system in case of a, a future draft. You had that one last um, yes. piece of information, Tom, about the fitness test. Yeah, that's this <laughs> that is the, the critical piece right here. While the majority yeah. of women are passing the test, very few of them can get perfect scores. Only 66 female soldiers scored 500 points or higher compared to 31,978 males. A score of 600 is the max. So that says it all right there. I mean, they can't that do says it. it all. They can't yeah. do it. 66 clearly, to 32,000. It's clearly because the test has an unconscious bias against yeah. it. <laughs> and I'll tell you, that I looked at the, the video of the test, and it's not that hard. It's not that onerous. I mean, when I looked at it, maybe, maybe I'm, you know, being soft. Well, it it changed a lot since I was in, but it, it wasn't a I didn't view it as a particularly hard test when I, I was in my late teens, early 20s. It right, didn't, right. It, it didn't phase me at all. Yeah, it'd be nothing. Uh, uh, but uh, it, it, I doubt very seriously now that it, it's that much harder than it was. If anything, no, I think it's, it's, I think it's easier. Probably easier. Much than easier. It was when I was in, and it wasn't that hard for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, crazy, maybe we should crazy. move to that that next article. Then this is the feminist response to some of these discussions. Uh -oh. Quite quite breathtaking in its hypocrisy and its dishonesty and <laughs> everything else. But uh, so so this is this is an article in Jezebel, very recent. And I have to admit, I haven't been very carefully following the the aftermath of the um, the move by the National Coalition of Men to. Uh, to have uh, the Supreme Court rule about whether it is a uh, case of gender discrimination that should be remedied, uh, that we have a male only draft still in the United States, or rather a selective service system that only men, once they turn, is it 18, uh, are required yeah. 
to register for in case of a draft being necessary. And it's a terrible thing. It, it I mean, it, there are very harsh penalties if you refuse to register for it. You can right. be fined up to, I think, $250,000. You can lose your American citizenship. You can be denied a driver's license. You can be denied all sorts of social services. This is a, a very serious thing that impacts only men. And so the National Coalition for Men has been saying this is a, you know, one of the most extreme forms of sexist discrimination in the country, and it should be remedied. And if feminists really care about gender equality, then they're going to have to seriously uh, wrestle with what it means to be a citizen and to expect equal rights, but then to somehow not expect to have to share the burdens of citizenship and, and to serve one's country in the fullest possible way. And uh, so um, so that's the, the position of the National Coalition for Men. And, and here's the feminist response. Uh, it's a short, dismissive article in which the author can't disguise her contempt for men, total lack of empathy, and just her uh, incredulity that, that, you know, that any men's rights organization should be taken seriously in their claim <laughs> that being forced to register for a potential draft where you may die protecting your country at time of war, that that is a form of gender discrimination. She laughs that off. Mm. It's more Supreme Court BS, she says. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's Kavanaugh's fault, I'm sure. <laughs> that's what they're pointing to. And it really, you know, I got to say, that's not just the National Coalition for Men's position. And again, once more, hats off to Mark Angelucci, the right. late great I was just thinking Mark that. Angelucci for initiating uh, this suit. Doing I'm all the work to bring it up to today. It. You know, I don't think women should be put into combat roles because I think it endangers everybody. But can women sub serve in support positions in the event of war? They sure as hell can. Yep. And uh, there is absolutely, you know, the old rationale for the Supreme Court once ruled on this, that, it, that the discrimination was fair because women were expressly forbidden from being assigned to combat roles. And... Mm -hmm. Now, Leon Panetta, uh, uh, I don't, I guess he was uh, Barack Obama's uh, yeah, I think so. Secretary of Defense, uh, managed to push through and change all that so that now there's no bar to women serving in combat. So the rationale that the Supreme Court ruled in favor of keeping the draft all male is no longer applies. Right. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with this. But you can bet your ass, you know, if we're going to have a draft, we should draft women too. We should make them register. We should treat people equally under the law. Um, and in employment and careers, treat them according to their abilities. Uh, that's the only thing that actually makes sense to me. And there's nothing in this suit that would prevent that. Unless we're not really equal. Mm -hmm. That's what they're fighting against. You know, that's there's... Right. <laughs> they're saying we're all equal but 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 we don't want to you know we don't want to do this draft thing but we're equal it's like mm -hmm. oh yeah. come on give it a rest yeah. well and the, and and that is expressed with startling clarity in this article this yes. young girl yes. i assume she's a young girl because she writes like one with the arrogance <laughs> of one she makes it clear that her understanding of feminism has nothing to do with equal responsibility. It has everything to do with gender specific privileges. Yes. So she says, uh, yeah, this is the second, it's a very short article, uh, but it deserves to be read because it is breathtaking in its hypocrisy. But it's, this is the la second to last paragraph. She says, she's referring to a statement by somebody who's, who's in favor of this suit, uh, saying that it would have warmed the heart of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, of course, who died uh, last year, but uh, you know, who who was supposedly a champion for women's equality. So this this um, this would have pleased her the the idea of of removing the discrimination against women from uh, their registering for the selective service system. So she says, oh, maybe that's true. I don't know. Either way, 
the ACLU taking up the military draft as an issue concerning gender discrimination seems to me to be a pitfall of liberal definitions of gender equality, which rely on the idea that women must seek to do everything that men do. Oh, so <laughs> that's that was very coercion. interesting. <laughs> They're being forced into it. Yeah, that's it. It's against Poor the lady. Real. This is kind of some form of rape, I think. (laughs) Let's look at the last paragraph. And the last one. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's the killer. While women's exclusion from the draft may technically be a form of discrimination, it's not a true feminist issue since it involves giving women the equal right to commit violence in many cases against <laughs> other women and inv- and advance the United States imperialist agenda. <laughs> that the Supreme Court challenge stemmed from a men's rights group is the tell. No one of any gender should be required to do those things. Oh my, here we go. Yeah. Uh, this is a, because <laughs> Let, let me get this right. You, we should discriminate and not draft women in order to promote Marxism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it makes me wonder how long before we start hearing from our Pentagon about the United States imperialist agenda and now mm-hmm. we, and how we need a military that reflects a defiance of that. You think that's crazy, yeah. folks? No. Nope. Guess what? It's happening. Yeah. We're in the midst of that now. Yeah. Uh, when you hear these leftist woke policies coming out of the Pentagon, these are the same people. This is their ideology that America is an imperialist nation that must be stopped and weakened and ultimately destroyed. Mm-hmm. And when our military starts thinking in those terms, we got big yeah. problems. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the hypocrisy of it, of course, is just overwhelming, too, in the sense that I bet Jezebel has not done any articles about against the draft until it became an issue that might potentially affect women. They didn't care at all. They figured, let the men go die in the imperialist wars. We don't give a damn about them. She's obviously never seriously thought about what it must be like to be a man turning 18 and knowing that your body isn't your own, that you can be called upon to die without any you know, acceptance of that on your part. Uh, that, that has not, she's never seriously considered that at all. And now she just comes out with this very glib kind of dismissal of the whole issue. Yeah, and framing it as being so wrong, this imperialist agenda, you know, and this violence against people, you know, have we ever heard feminists complain about those things? No, we've heard, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and that's all exactly. we hear. And, but now it's convenient for her to yeah. try and pull this out of the air. And you got to give her some credit for, for pulling something out of the air that's just bizarre. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just totally off the wall, but it was the only thing she had probably. You know, but, uh, I mean, it's, give her credit for that, but it's really, it's it just shows how unable they are to take any responsibility to be accountable in any way what how telling is it that online and feminist circles online you see the the term and i've seen this several times now i miss the days when men went to war and didn't come back oh god really yeah i've seen that used several times oh jeez and this is part of the mentality driving this hypocrisy too. Uh, That's crazy. uh, What this boils down to is that that feminists really are finally starting to reveal that they were never about equality. It was never about that. I I get so tired of hearing people say, oh, feminism was a great idea that went astray at some point. Yeah, Yeah. bullshit. Yeah, go to Seneca Falls. Yes, go to Seneca Falls, look at that history, look at the the rhetoric of second wave feminists all through the 60s and 70s. It was a hate movement aimed at gaining women's privilege from the beginning. It was never uh, what they claimed it was. And the hate movement used false accusations towards men as a means to 
bolster their ideas. You know, this whole idea of men oppressing women is so bizarre and so disgusting. You know, I read the other day in the Epic Times, there was an article about uh, Stonewall Jackson, and it, it had a clip of what he, a letter he wrote to his wife while he was at war. It was amazing what he was saying. I mean, he was just so loving towards her and very blue pill. And he basically said, you're everything. You are the, the ultimate in purity. I am your slave. He literally said that. Now, does that sound like an oppressor to you? Hell no. That's absolutely insane. And when I read the the uh, the, the um, diaries of my grand great grandparents, I see the same kind of stuff. You know, these women and men loved each other. They cared about each other. They had a they had it hard, and they had to bust ass, but they did love each other. And we're, we've been fed this image of men being these terrible brutes, which is just bullshit. No. You know, uh, uh, I remember quite well, we at A Voice for Men, we did some advocacy work in a divorce case of a Lieutenant Joel Kirk, Lieutenant Colonel Joel Kirk, yeah. who was a, a, a Marine and Navy pilot. And he talked about the combat theater in Iraq that they used to construct these large communication tents where the soldiers would come in from the field and they had a way to spend face time with their families and to, to make huh. phone calls. And he talked about going into those tents and seeing guys that are, have just come in, they're caked with sand and, and dirt, uh, filthy, dirty, blood sprayed on them from being in battle, sitting on phones, listening to complaints about the cables not working oh, right God. in the house. And, it, and this is what this is some of the reality uh, of what goes on. And you look at all the men that lose marriages and relationships while they're in combat theaters. They get Dear John letters. Um, this sort of straying from our topic a little bit, but I, I think all of this stuff for me just totally ignores the, the, the lived reality for men in combat uh, that is just not discussed in the midst of all this political garbage. It ignores the humanity of men. Yeah. You know, it's just that simple. You know, whether it's the oppressive bullshit or the the not seeing things in in your tent as you're talking about it's just the humanity of men is just it's not seen gynocentrism yep. you know yeah i mean this is a this article is a keeper in that sense is that oh, yeah. it's so so blatant yep. in 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 that in its lack of empathy yes um i mean if, you know if if she wanted to argue that the draft is a barbaric practice uh, I know lots of men would probably agree with that. If she wants yes. to try to make the the uh, argument that um, I don't know that the most powerful nation on the earth doesn't actually need a uh, powerful military, that's I've heard people make that argument too. Uh, you know, she there you know there are all sorts of arguments to be had here, um, but uh, it's clear that she's not interested in any of them. It. it uh, you know, she only make ends in this manner about you know how no no gender should be required to sign up to to, uh, to to fight for their country because she needs to weasel out of the position that she's absolutely not interested in equality. And and well, earlier sir. in the in the article, she had said that she quotes from the National Coalition for Men saying that no gender oppression is comparable in magnitude to the deaths of males in war, which includes forced conscription. Right. She quotes that with derision. She yep. doesn't even try to make an argument about it. She certainly doesn't agree with it or recognize any truth in it. It's just a throwaway line to show how crazy these men's rights groups are and how they should be laughed out of the room. Yep. I, I, you know, it's really, it's beyond words, the, the, the level of entitlement of this yep. silly girl. And it goes untouched because of the same kinds of, of energies that have protected the police thing that we first started talking about and the army yeah. thing. And now Jezebel, it's all the same thing. There's this yeah. cloud of energy that says, don't do anything to women. Don't hold them yeah. accountable in any don't way. Don't hold them an accountable in any way. And if there were any honest feminists, they would be so embarrassed by the lengths that various institutions have been forced to go 
to try to pretend that there can be such a thing as gender equality and they would be deeply humiliated and appalled by the contempt expressed by this young entitled privileged woman yes. and the fact that there is no movement speaking against this there are a few voices of women who call themselves feminists but object to this kind of nonsense but really it has not hindered the feminist movement in any way from continuing to make its outrageous claims and continuing its anti-male bashing constantly uh, which just goes to prove, I guess, that there are no or very few honest feminists. Well, and have honestly, have any of us ever met a feminist who couldn't easily live with hypocrisy and contradictions yeah. and double mm -hmm. standards? Yeah, uh, that's it. I've never met one. It, it, it's it. Re, you're required to live with those yes. things to take yes. these, these different positions. That's it. That is correct. Hmm. Oh my God, I can't believe we come to the conclusion that there's hypocrisy in feminism. Yeah. Jesus, who'd have thought? <laughs> <laughs> or there's such a thing as gynocentrism. Mm. <laughs> Lordy mercy. And she does. Are we... So I guess we should end by saying that men are good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're consistent, Elam. Yeah. I knew you weren't going to yield. It made my job easy. Guys, come visit us on Regarding Men. Join the groups. We're having a lot of fun there every Indeed. day of the week. It's amazing. The it's absolutely amazing. And we'll see you next time. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Have a great week. Bye-bye.